It had been a long day for Boko. Between the gloomy sky and the back-to-back -back jobs he had to do that day, the Class 28 was tired as he arrived at the clay pits. Bill and Ben were nowhere to be seen, but his train was ready. Boko backed down on his train, and while waiting, he dozed off. Boko awoke to see a line of trucks roll past him with no engine. Very funny, Bill and Ben, he sighed. The twins stopped beside him. Ah, you're no fun. Were you the least bit spooked? <sighs> this isn't the first time you two tried to pull this prank on us. Surely you can see the fun in it, said Ben. It wouldn't be funny if you send trucks loose down the track and it hits a workman, Boko said sternly. The twins looked at each other. You're right, Boko. We're sorry. We promise not to do it again. I'll hold you to it. And the big diesel left the pits. That evening, the twins were finishing the last order of china clay for the day when their manager approached them. All right, listen up, William and Benjamin. Edward and Boko are busy, so I phoned the fat controller, and he made arrangements for you two to take this train on to Vickerstown. I trust you two won't get into trouble. Yes, sir, they said in unison. Good. Now get going. Does he think we don't do our jobs well? Granite, our reputation would make him question. True. So let's continue to prove we are useful. The twins collected their trucks and started up the branch, but were halted at Brandom and had to wait for Boko to leave with his passengers. The Diesel looked over at the twins and had a little idea for payback. I see Sir Topham had you two take that train for me. I appreciate it. It's no bother. Besides, we don't get an opportunity to see the other half of the island that often. We'll take care of passing through Henry's forest. Why? The twins asked, confused. Because of the Great Bear. The Great Bear? Indeed. An old but large creature said to roam the forest at night. Not many have seen the creature, but those who haven't survived have claimed it to be as big as an engine. Okay, you're having us on now, Bill said unamused. Yeah, we've heard better, Ben added. I'm not finished, Boko said sternly. Long before any of us came to Sodor, a group of campers from the mainland set up their campsite in the forest. The night was settling in and everything was going fine until they occasionally heard a light rumble, but passed it off as nothing. However, some were a little uneasy. The rumbles became louder, the occasional twig began to break, and they heard what sounded like a small roar. Finally, a few campers went looking in the direction the sound was coming from. They didn't have to go far when they came face to face with the beast. It was so dark, the only thing they could make out was its bright green eyes. The camper screamed and ran back towards the campsite. The beast followed them, making the earth feel like it was breaking apart, and its roar was deafening. The campers got out of the forest, and as they did, the sound died down. They breathed sighs of relief, but then realized one of them was missing. A search party was formed that morning, but they could never find their friend. And like the other survivors, they would once again recount how the beast was big like an engine. Okay, I think that's enough, Bill said. Don't believe it? Boko asked. Frankly, no, Bill said with confidence. If that really happened, I think at least Edward or some workman would have told us when we arrived. Say what you want. But this is the time of year it is said to appear. And the diesel rolled away with his passengers. Big as an engine, what rubbish, Bill snorted. I don't know, Bill. What if he was telling the truth? Oh, come on, you just said to Boko. I know, but you can't deny strange things have happened on this island. Bill rolled his eyes. The signal turned green, and the two left the docks. Night had fallen when the twins reached Kildane, and as they entered the forest... Ouch! The twins came to a halt. 
What happened? Bill asked. My valve gear broke. I can't go any further, Ben said in pain. Well, this is just great. Bill wasn't strong enough to pull both Ben and their long train, so the guard walked back to the last signal box, placing detonators as he went. All the twins could do now was wait. B -b Bill? Yes, Ben? Have you realized where we are? We're in the forest. Oh, oh, for goodness sake, Ben, don't start. Boko travels the main line more than us, and he works with Edward, who knows more than any other engine. And? We played a trick on him. He was probably pulling our wheels. Probably. Whatever. Just then a low rumble drifted through the woods. What was that? Ben asked. I don't know. The rumble was getting closer and closer. Now Bill was starting to feel tense. They could see an object with two green eyes moving in the distance. Suddenly, there was a loud roar. The twins froze as the object got closer, and the rumble grew louder. But the twins could now make out a boxy shape, and out of the darkness appeared Bear. Good evening, you two. I heard you need some assistance. He then saw their pale faces. You guys all right? Oh, Bear. It's you, sighed Bill. Are we glad to see you. Please get us out of here, Ben added. Bear was confused and fought wise tasks later. Then the twins realized something. Bear, what happened to your headlamps? They strangely burned out about a mile back, he said. And if by magic the bulbs lit like they were brand new, now Bear, and even the twins, was more confused. Without a word, the Hymek coupled up and towed the twins to Vickerstown. The trio soon arrived at Vickerstown. What was the deal with your faces earlier? It looked like you two saw a ghost, Bear asked. Not necessarily, Ben said. Bear looked at the twins confused, and they explained Boko's story and what happened in the forest. And the occasional roar in your engine spooked us, said Bill. Now Bear looked even more confused. That can't be. The men at Croven's Gate fixed the roar in my engine a year after I arrived he said. Y y uh, you mean... I never heard that roar you two did. The twins sat in silence. Bear knew not to say anything else, and shunted their trucks away. Bill didn't want to return to the clay pits alone, so the twins and their crews agreed to bring Ben back to Brendam and have Boko take him back to Croven's Gate the next day on his morning goods. After getting turned, they set off for home, and Bear gave them a friendly honk of his horn as they left. The twins re-entered the forest, and when they rounded the bend to where they were stopped before, they stopped and stared at the beast staring back at them. Bill? Yes, Ben? What is that? Mm -hmm.